You're listening to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, sponsored by Essentia Health. Here, our hobbies become our work, and our work becomes our passion. But when joint pain or injuries keep us from doing what we love, it can affect our entire way of life. That's why we meet these challenges head on. Whatever your good day looks like, we'll find it together. This is Essentia Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, like nowhere else. Visit EssentiaHealth.org. Hello and welcome to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, brought to you by Essentia Health. I'm Matt Wellens, the Bulldogs hockey beat writer at the Duluth News Tribune and the Rink Live. And I'm Zach Schneider, the television voice of UMB Hockey on My Nine Sports. There is no Bruce Siski on the podcast this week. Our apologies to his fan club that's enjoyed him uh, dropping in here weekly. But I feel like we upgraded uh, the third person of the podcast this week. Huge upgrade. Uh, joining us on the podcast this week, not only a great hockey player, uh, she does lead NCAA Division I women's ice hockey in scoring with 1.94 points per game this season. She's also a heck of a good person as well. That's why we got her on the podcast this week. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, second time this season, actually, we're bringing her out already. Bulldogs Senior Center, Gabby Hughes. Hi, Gabby. Hi, how are you? We're doing this from Zoom. Uh, unfortunately, we're back to doing the podcast on Zoom. I'm going to preface this right now. Hopefully by prefacing this, I won't jinx us for later in the week. Uh, we're recording this on Tuesday, as we always do. Fingers crossed, I don't have to record another scheduled change disclaimer uh, like I did last week to, to throw at the top of the podcast here. So Bulldogs are scheduled to host Bemidji State at 3 o'clock on Friday and Saturday at Anzoil Arena. Uh, Saturday's game is a special one, too, uh, especially for you, Gabby. And correct me if I got this name wrong. Uh, I'm stealing it from Kelly's uh, feature that she posted on Tuesday to umdbulldogs.com. Uh, Hockey hits back Sophie's squad mental health awareness game. Perfect. Yeah. Nailed it. Awesome. Always trust Kelly to, to have the right information out there for me. Sophie squad. Uh, it's an organization I, I've written about it on, on the rink live and Duluth news tribune.com because I was super curious about your uh, scoring an intro gif at, at the beginning of the season. Of course, <laughs> let's, I'm going to be honest and divulge my journalistic instinct here. It wasn't like some super spidey sense or anything. It's just, I'm curious about a gif, but Sophie squad it's in honor of a 14-year-old, again, correct me if I pronounce her name wrong here, Gabby, uh, I should leave this up to Zach. He's the name pronunciation expert. Uh, Sophie Weiland? Yes. Yes. Sophie Weiland, youth hockey player, friend of yours who, who died by suicide this summer. Gabby, let's just start this off. Tell us about Sophie. How did you meet her and, and what was she like? Yeah, I was very lucky um, to get the chance to know her and her family. They're an A1 family all around. They're just such great people. Um, my dad has a summer hockey program down in the city. It's called Skate to Excellence. And I just always go and help out with a bunch of the teams that he coaches down there. So um, the Wylands have Rachel, who is on the U19 team, and then Sophie, who is on the U14 team. And I always go back whenever I'm home. I just hang out with those teams and coach wherever I can. And this summer I was lucky enough to run my own stick handling clinic on Monday and Tuesday nights. And she came for Monday and Tuesday nights, and she also came. Um, our garage at home isn't really a garage. It's a shooting area. We haven't parked there since I was like two years old. So um, people come over and shoot all the time, and Sophie and Rachel would come down from Sartell and shoot pucks in the garage probably two nights a week. So I just got to know her through all of that and coaching and just hanging on the garage with her. So um, she is just such a bubbly and intelligent kid and every time she walks in the room she had one of those contagious smiles where she just um brought the room up in in light and everything so I think that was my my main takeaway that I had was just her her bubbly personality and and her smile that she brought everywhere she went and she was such a great teammate and she was incredibly smart she was in like every honors program um everything that you could think of for education wise she was she was doing it so yeah and how was Sophie's squad formed from, from her, her, her death? How did that come to, together? 
yeah, so it was kind of a, a we had a little bit of a crazy week happen um, when it did because we were traveling out to Boston uh, that weekend to play in the Beantown Classic as both the U14 and U19 team. So when we were out in Boston, Rachel and her mom decided to still come out and make the trip and they had the funeral after the fact. But when we were out there, there was a big lobby area and we were all kind of hanging out as parents and, and my brother and my mom and dad. And we kind of just started a conversation that something needed to be done about this. And we usually do for Skate to Excellence, we have like an end of the, the year, uh, end of the summer, like golf tournament. And usually that raises money for kids who can't afford to play summer hockey. So my brother came up with a great idea of changing that to be a, a mental health awareness golf tournament instead. And that's kind of where it all started with that small little conversation. And we came back after that and created a board and a committee and had board meetings every week. And um, it all started because we're going to have a golf tournament at the end of this this summer of 2022. And then we came up with having hockey events to get people know what Sophie Squad is and everything just kind of fell into place. And it's been an unbelievable journey and we keep growing in such different ways, but it all started with a, a little conversation of a bunch of people just wanting to do something to, to change, change the mental health area. This is a conversation, Gabby, that's probably in the sports world gained a lot more traction over the last maybe three to five years, especially with the pandemic um, and things like Sophie's story you know, so often are used as maybe a catalyst for a change in the conversation. How, how much did knowing her and her background before uh, her death change it for you? Because it was, it's always kind of an abstract idea. We want to support the kids and we want to support their mental health. But once you know somebody in a family who's gone through it, how did that change uh, it for you and, and make you uh, really spark you to be, get really involved in this conversation in that community? It's so important and her story and, and her family, just seeing the, the pain that they went through and, and the pain that our community of Skates Excellence went through was definitely life-changing. I mean, for sure, her life definitely sparked me in a new, a new way and definitely changed my life aspect of, of where I kind of want to take my journey in life right now. And just the effect that it had on her family and seeing that and the whole entire community of of girls at her age seeing like when me and my my dad had to share in the news with her teammates um because the violence couldn't make the trip down to to tell the team um just seeing the devastation in their faces and in their eyes was life-changing and I knew at that moment seeing all those 12 to 14 year old girls having to come to a realization of what that truly means as someone taking their own life um I love all of those kids at that age. Like that whole group is so amazing. So seeing kids that I care about um, go through something like that makes me definitely want to talk about it. And I never thought that I would be willing to share kind of my story and my journey through it all. But definitely when it's it's so close and personal to you, it it sparks that conversation and it it definitely sparked the passion in me that that I want to talk about it and I want to make make people know that they're not alone and and it is okay and you'll come out on the other side of it. So yeah, her story is definitely something that that's changed me. Gabby, you kind of touched on a little bit, but where, where did the concept of these hockey hits back games come from and, and how much fun has it been to see these, these events being put on through all levels of, of, of hockey now and, and seeing so many different people getting involved, you know, in Sophie's squad and, and in this cause. Yeah, it's, it's so amazing. I mean, my dad is the president. My mom's a secretary. So whenever we get on, on FaceTimes or Zooms to talk about it, we kind of have to pinch ourselves to see like how big these events have gotten. But the idea of like having the hockey hits back events was just to get our name out there so people would know who we are before we had the golf tournament. But they've kind of turned into our, our big main focus. Um, and those are our big main events rather than it being driven to, to promote our golf tournament that we're having. So they're so fun and it's so amazing to see how big it has gotten. We have a bunch of different sports that want to do something like we have soccer teams that are wanting to do something and we're trying to figure out maybe we change our name instead of it being a hockey hits back event, it's like something around just athletes in general hitting back or whatever. But it's just amazing to see the different um, 
people that are wanting to get involved in different tournaments that just want to have us have our logo out there or sponsor their tournaments and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely um, super exciting to see. I have to definitely pinch myself when, when it keeps getting bigger and the DMs come in of, of girls seeing how much they appreciate it. It's, it's really cool. Do you think these hockey hits backs uh, uh, events are uh, the original goal was just to, you know, build, you know, awareness of, of Sophie's squad, but do you think that they're having an impact on, on younger hockey players and, and bringing this conversation uh, to that level? Zach mentioned, you know, I, I think, you know, three to five years, it's, it's definitely been happening. You know, the conversation about mental health, we're, we're hearing a lot about it more in, in college sports. There's the green bandana project at, at UMD. Um, you're hearing professional athletes come out about it. And maybe it's because I'm disconnected at the, you know, for the high school sports at the college level, but you know, I think for teenagers, mental health is still something that can be tough to talk about. Do you think these hockey hits back events are, are changing that? I definitely do. Just with conversations that I have, I've been able to have with some of the girls that play on the Centennial High School hockey team when we did that event or girls that have played skate to excellence throughout the years. I talked to them, they're at Rogers or wherever they are. Um, they've talked to me after the events about just conversations that it got going in the locker room or teammates reaching out to them because they know their their parents are a part of Sophie's squad. Like just the the DMs we get too from high school kids saying how much they appreciated it and how much they're, this is needed within high school conversations. I definitely think it is sparking conversations throughout the high school level because I mean, when I was in high school, I never told anybody anything like that because you just didn't. You didn't want people to know that aspect of your life. But I think we are making a, a little bit of change. And our our motto right now is if we can save one person, then then we're doing what our goal is. And I think we're reaching a lot more people than we think. One thing that I read uh, in UMD's release uh, ahead of this weekend, Sophie's squad game, Gabby, is a, a quote from you that said that you want to be remembered during your time at UMD more so for this than anything you did on the ice. And you've done a lot of things on the ice that people will, re will remember you for uh, in a Bulldogs uniform. But I wanted to give you the space to kind of expand on that idea because I think it's it's not uh, an idea that a lot of college athletes have. It's a perspective that maybe is unique to you. And, and UMD does a lot of great work in the community, all of their players. Uh, but I think that college athletes, for the most part, are focused on uh, their college careers, their college academics, and, you know, for some of you getting to the next level or uh, graduating and things like that. But that signifies how important this has become in, in your life, that, that you'd rather people associate Gabby Hughes with uh, Sophie's squad and hockey hits back than any of the, uh, the stuff that you've done on the ice for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I think just throughout all of all of this that has happened since since the day we found out that she did pass. Um, I just, I think something changed in, in my heart and my head that I just needed to, to do something about this. And it's so much more important than just like the game. I mean, my dad and I had an interview and he said it, it wasn't about the game at that point when we found out it's about how we're going to take care of the kids that hit home for me. And it's not about, it's not about just a game. I love the game so much and I'm so passionate about it. And I play my heart out every single game, but it's for a different reason now. And it's, it's, I would rather have people talking about Sophie squad and mental health and, and helping people in that aspect than, than thinking of me as just a, a good hockey player. I think it's far more important to have a discussion about Sophie squad or mental health awareness than, than any of my accomplishments. So I do, I really truly do hope that, that someday when people do talk about me, if they do, it's, it's what I did off the ice and with this Sophie squad mental health stuff, than than what I did on the ice. Now that said, Matt said at the open that you're putting together on the ice, perhaps your best season so far uh, with UMD and, and largely this podcast isn't about what's happening on the ice, but with what happened over the summer and the experiences you've had with Sophie's squad and hockey hits back since, you know, from an outsider's perspective, it might be, you know, convenient for us to say that you're enjoying the game a little bit more this year, but do you feel that uh, on the ice that it's, it's a little bit more joyful every time you get to, to play the game now? I definitely do. And I think that all comes back to, to the tragedy that did happen. I mean, my, my, 
gif or gif, whatever you want to call it, um, speaks for itself that I think I just took it into a different aspect this year um, rather than being stressed out a bit about being a hockey player or having to be good or putting that pressure on myself. I think I just took it into a different aspect and thinking that I'm, I'm playing the game because I love it. And that's really all I'm doing. And I'm, I'm playing out there for Sophie. And I think that just lets me play more free and have a whole lot more fun than, than playing a game with pressure on my shoulders. And I think she's definitely changed, changed the way I think of every time I step on the ice, I, I take it as a, an opportunity and, and a very grateful experience every time I get to go on the ice. And I think I'm definitely having a lot more fun. And I think that's also why I'm producing a little bit more is I'm not putting that outside pressure on my shoulders. All right. With that, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to try a game over Zoom, which has Zach scared. I, I, I know the last time we tried a game over Zoom on this podcast, it bombed horribly. But we're going to try it as well as some quick hits for Gabby as well. So we're going to take that break and then we'll have more. You're listening to the Bulldog Insider podcast brought to you by Essential Health. I'm McHatton. I'm Jess Myers, and we are the co-hosts of the Rink Live podcast. We really pride ourselves on finding some unique guests and, and covering some of the topics of the day, not only in college hockey, but kind of across a broad spectrum. Yep. We also talk uh, junior hockey. We'll get some of that talk in there as well. Uh, women's hockey, men's hockey. We try to talk to people from throughout the game and actually from all over the country. That's been one of the great things on Zoom. And Mick and I are kind of OG, the Rink Live guys. We were here from the start we have about three years ago now when, when things got off the ground. But we brought a fair amount of college hockey experience to, to this job. I uh, went to Minnesota Duluth. I covered college hockey starting then when I was a student. I've covered the Frozen Four 28 times. And I primarily cover the Minnesota Gophers now for the Rink Live, but dabble in a little bit of everything. And I've covered St. Cloud State Hockey. Now this will be my 12th season. So uh, please check us out on the Rink Live podcast on Mondays. Hey there, my name is Samantha Urkula, and I'm the host of the Duluth News Tribune Minute podcast. Hear the most important news of the day, including weather and sports, from Duluth, Minnesota, and from around the Northland. Join me and my fellow reporters as we take you through the local news you need to start your day. Episodes are released Monday through Friday and are available on Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for supporting local journalism. Welcome back to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, brought to you by Essentia Health. I'm Matt Wellens, joined here by Zach Schneider and Bulldog Senior Setter Gabby Hughes. As promised, we're going to try a game here over Zoom. If it bombs horribly, Dan Williamson, our producer this week, will either cut it out or leave it in for my own embarrassment. It's based off of a question I actually meant to ask your line mate, Anna Klein, last week, but, but I didn't get to it. She's on a line with you and uh, Elizabeth Shiger, and I want to know like on a three on two or a three on one rush who she would want to pass the puck to for a scoring chance and who she would pick to dish the puck to for a scoring chance. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you can pick one or the other one person to take a pass from, or one person to, you know, pass the puck to for the scoring chance. Does that make right. sense, Gabby? Yeah, that does make sense. That does make sense. Yeah. Wow. This is a win this week right there. I came up she with sounded something. super confident. <laughs> I, I have, I'm like having to think about it. I'm a very visual person. So I'm trying to visualize it on the ice. You're a teacher that or not quite yet. We won't call you a teacher yet. So yeah, I'm calling this game right now. Pass, shoot, score. I don't know if that title works, but we'll start with your line mates. Klein and Shiger. Who do you want passing you the puck for a scoring chance? Who do you want to dish to for the shot? I'll take the pass from Jig and I'll pass the puck to Kleiner to score. That's what I would do, do there as well. I mean, Jiggy's passes, how ridiculous are those? Don't even get me started. They're amazing. I don't, <laughs> sometimes I don't know how she gets it. Like one of the goals against Harvard, I just stood at the net and ended up on my stick and I looked at her and I was like, what? <laughs> how did you just get that through those people? I said this on a broadcast early in the season, Gabby, uh, you and Anna certainly have the talent to score goals in the more conventional way, but have the two of you scored more tap in goals in a season ever than you have this year? No, I don't think so. I mean, sometimes I'm just at the net, like my habit now is just stop at the net all the time because somehow it's, I think a puck is going to land on my stick from Jig. <laughs> Jiggy was having a lot of fun against Harvard, wasn't she? Yes, she was. She had a good weekend. 
yeah, she seemed to enjoy being back there at Harvard, maybe almost as much as uh, Coach Flora Balabi. Continuing uh, the game pass shoot score here, I got a couple of different scenarios for you. Now we're going to put Ashton, your Olympic teammates, and we can call her an Olympic teammate now, Ashton Bell and uh, Cassie Betanol. Who are you taking the pass from? Who are you setting up for the goal? I think, oh, that's a tough one. I think I would take the pass from Ashton and pass to Cass. Why the pass from Ashton and uh, setting up Cassie? Cassie's been good with the Chinese national team. It looks like scored goals right now. Is that why? Yeah, I think so. I think she's really having so much fun out there. Some of the goals that she has are absolutely unbelievable. So I think I'm really confident in her ability to put the puck in the back of the net off of a pass. And Ashton, I miss just like power plays and passing the puck with her in games and stuff. I really miss having her out there and she always makes really crisp, good passes. So I think that's where that came from. All right. Uh, The next one. This one might get you in trouble. I'm sorry, Gabby. Zach just nods his head. Yep. Assuming Laura Bellamy is in goal, she's going to be insulted that I didn't even include her in this, probably. Um, that's who we're going to hear from. Coach Maura Kroll and Coach Laura Schuler. Oh, goodness. I think I would I would pass to Shu, and I would get a pass from Coach. W- would they agree with that? Yes, I think they would for sure agree with that, yeah. And, and do you guys score on, on Laura Bellamy? I think we would, yeah. You think you would? Okay. I haven't seen her suit up since I've been at UMD. I'm hoping before I leave, she puts the pads back on, but. She has not suited up in goal in, in your four years here yet? Nope. Wow. She loves, we play rebound games. So she claims that she's a better skater nowadays than she is a goalie now. So, I mean, she is, she is always sniping and rebound game and she was too, but. So here's the offshoot of that question. Would you switch out Coach Kroll or Coach Schuler and move Laura into one of those slots if given the opportunity? Yeah. Which one? Yeah, I'd put Coach out. She gets the boot. Uh, Lou can come in. <laughs> and there's the controversy. It's a good thing you're, you're scoring 1.94 points per game. When you're scoring 1.94 points per game, you could do that. All right, uh, because so this year... What, you've been working with uh, Lincoln Park Middle School and Lester Park Elementary, right? Yep. Yeah. Doing some student teaching over there. All right. Um, an elementary schooler and a middle schooler. Oh, wow. I think I'd have more confidence in a middle schooler putting my puck, putting my pass in the back of the net than an elementary school kid. So I think I'd pass to the middle school and get a pass from the elementary school kids. Okay. All right could turn that into a whole teaching seminar project or something like that in the future. I don't know how I'm not smart enough to, to come up with that. That's why I host hockey podcasts. All right. Uh, your older brothers, Trey and Colin. Oh goodness. If they listen to this, I'm going to get in trouble. Um, they were both such natural goal scorers, but I'm going to have to go with, pass the puck to Colin and get the pass from Trey. Would they agree with that or no? They both want the puck, huh? They yeah, both so, want the so puck. Trey is going to be insulted. Yeah, I think so. But he could put the puck away too. I'm just thinking. That's not a bad thing. The assist is not a bad thing. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm hoping they don't get a little too upset. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, last one here. Your parents, Terry and Mickey. Oh my gosh. I would for sure pass the puck to my dad. My mom, I don't even think can skate. So I think I would get a pass from my mom, but I don't know if it ever make it to me. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of tough. I think I just pass the puck to my dad. I don't know if I'd ever get a pass. (laughs) All right. Some quick hits here to close this out. Mara Kroll was reminding us in the West that we whine sometimes about, uh, those weren't her exact words, but that, that's what she was getting at. We whine about midweek games that everyone else in college hockey plays about all the time. Gabby, you guys might have to, to make up that State Cloud Series, play some midweek games. I don't know if you've played any uh, yet in your career, had any midweek games. They've all been on the weekend, huh? Yep. You're very, very lucky. Uh, midweek games, yay or nay? Yay, another game, yeah. 
<laughs> You're not complaining about it. All right. Would you rather lead the country in goals or lead the country in assists? You're currently top three in both. If I remember right, Kleiner's up there with you in goals and Jiggy's up there with you in assists. I would say assists. I'd rather be giving the puck to Jig and Kleiner. See, Trey, it's it's okay to, to be setting up okay, goals. Okay, Trey. <laughs> Who has the best uh, GIF or, or video for intros uh, and scoring on the team this season? That one's so hard, but I always pick Maggie's, Flaherty's. I love the bulldog costume that she put on. <laughs> She's had a couple good ones now. She flipped her fake teeth out that one time, right? Was that yep. her? Yeah. Yep, that's Maggie. <laughs> Zach, what's your favorite? Is it Kleiner that has the cat? No, nope. that's Rogi. That's Rogi. I like, yeah, I like Naomi's. The Simba, the cat. Yep. <laughs> yeah, my favorite is Gabby's. I, I just thought it was so cool that you did that this year. Um, but for comedic value as well, uh, yeah, I just burst out laughing when all of a sudden I saw Rogi uh, pull out a cat. <laughs> it was like the whole system and process to get her cat down to the ring. It was so funny. <laughs> all right, Gabby, this is this is the hardest one. And maybe, maybe it's easier. Maybe because Laura Bellamy, maybe she's not putting on the pads yet because she wants to give you an incentive to continue your, your hockey career. You're in a tough position as, as an education major. I know for this, have, have you thought about a fifth season yet? And are you coming back? Yeah. Yeah, I am for sure. It was tough with the major and it's been hard trying to figure it all out with fully student teaching next year, but we're going to figure out how to make it work. And we've been in the process of making it work, but yeah, I, I have to stay. I can't leave full that country yet not ready when ashton comes back with with a medal next season she needs some faces she recognizes right uh, around here as, as well and this gives laura bellamy one extra year to yep. put on the pads uh for gabby though so jeez i hope cassie doesn't listen to this matt well, uh, well Cass, yeah cassie she's be- coming back too yeah but cassie's younger she knows all the younger girls she well, knows all the youngers said, but ashton ashton is a medal she could come back with a medal too. The underdog I'm, Chinese team. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm going to send. Might have given him some bulletin board material now. Poor Ashton's going to be. Uh, she's going to get a lot of the old lady jokes. I'm, I'm afraid that Jiggy's probably fielding this year. Hey, thanks for coming on and, and doing this with us. Uh, we appreciate you making the time. We know it's a crazy, interesting schedule and stuff this week. But um, thanks for coming on and, and talking about Sophie Squad. Where can people learn more about Sophie Squad? can go to our website at sophiesquad.org. It has all of our information, our partnerships, and all of our merchandise. Are the links to all the social media accounts there as well? Yes, we do have an Instagram and a Twitter, and they are both also Sophie Squad. All right, so check those out online and, and come to the game on, on Saturday as, as well. Hopefully we got a game Saturday uh, and can check that out. Uh, Zach, what does the TV schedule look like this weekend uh, for My Nine Sports? We've got just the men's games Friday and Saturday. Uh, so 7 o'clock, uh, the Dogs are hosting Miami uh, after a weekend off uh, with their canceled series last weekend as well. So neither of the women's games, unfortunately. we uh, I kind of wanted to be doing that Sophie squad game, but it just didn't line up uh, with the TV schedule. So that's okay. Get to the rink uh, and support them in person. Gabby, are you raising any money, uh, donations encouraged, or is it just an awareness uh, thing? What can people bring to the rink when they come watch you play Saturday? Yeah, we have, we're going to have all of our merchandise tables there for uh, donations. If you'd like to purchase, we'll have our donation buckets and QR codes around the rink. And we're also doing a silent auction and chuck a puck. So those are also ways that you can, can donate to the cause and everything like that. Can't do any of that when you're watching on TV. So it works out pretty good. No, yes. you can't yes. get to the rink this weekend. Again, huge thanks to Gabby for, for coming on and, and talking about Sophie's squad. Uh, thanks to my co-host Zach Schneider as well for joining me again apologies to the Bruce Siski fan club uh, that we uh, didn't invite him to this week's episode Bulldog Insider comes out every Thursday and you can find us on Apple Podcasts Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts subscribe and rate us for more Bulldogs hockey coverage visit therinklive.com and DuluthNewsTribune.com thanks to our sponsor Essential Health for their continued support of the Bulldog Insider podcast thanks for listening we'll catch you next week